Hi everybody, I'm B, founder of Yes Parenting, and I am joined today by Scott Swain. He is a NVC trainer. NVC stands for Nonviolent Communication, and I'm really glad that you can join us today for this interview. And Scott, it is wonderful to have you here as well. Hello. Uh, Hello. Yeah, I'm feeling honored and uh, looking forward to where we'll go with this. Yeah, me too. Now, um, I just want to share with everyone, Scott and I first met in person in Austin back in 2012 when I was doing a nine week road trip with my sons. And back then they were age six and eight. And um, Scott was very generous in hosting us as, as couch surfers. And it was a real honor to me to spend in total, I think, almost two and a half, maybe almost three weeks with Scott, learning about NVC. I'd never heard of it before. And at first I found it really awkward. Um, and I remember Scott saying to me, do you know what, it is awkward because although it's natural, it's really unfamiliar. And I've carried that whole idea of um, natural versus unfamiliar with me ever since. And it might be something that we can talk about a bit in this interview. But one of the things that was really brilliant about staying with Scott was that he helped me find a different language for the challenges that I was facing with my boys. And then also because while I was there, a huge change happened in my life. And I found out that my uh, husband at the time didn't want to be married to me anymore. And I couldn't have been in a better physical environment because Scott supported me in finding an NVC language to help me navigate some of those challenging conversations. So it's, it's a real honor for me to be here with you today, Scott. So one of the things that you shared with me is that um, for you, NVC is this really incredible tool for learning and practicing empathy. And I would look, can you expand on that so that the people listening um, can get a kind of a better sense of what on earth does it mean to learn and to practice empathy? Uh, wow, so that's big. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm excited to share that. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for mentioning, I, I didn't realize I had such a great impact. Um, I know when you first came, actually, it was the first time I had heard of or experienced um, unschooling, and um, I, it seemed so, uh, seemed such a useful and wonderful way of dealing with children. It seemed like, you know, and I, you, you were so committed to uh, nonviolence with your children, and you're so committed to honoring their uh, autonomy. And, and not, you know, and, and being so patient with the, the, hard, the hard situations that children can um, throw at you. Um, so I was just so impressed by that. And, and it's, it's kind of funny to hear you say that NBC was so hard for you in the very beginning, or at least unfamiliar, um, because you seem to be already doing it. At least the, the underlying intention was there. Mm. And more than that, um, it, it's, it just seemed like you acquired it and started using it with ease. And I, I remember even wondering, wait, have you already read the book? And, and I think you said, I'm pretty sure you said no. And Yeah, never heard of it before. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, so that, that sort of ties in to when you talk about empathy and NBC being a tool. I like to say a tool and be real clear with that because... I don't want to assume that it's the only tool or the best tool. I mean, it's the best tool I've found for me. Mm -hmm. And it, um, there's a certain uh, concreteness, a certain um, solidity to uh, NVC, its practice that I enjoy that really works for me. It's, it's uh, because you hear, or I hear people um, speak of empathy and everybody, I, I believe all humans are, are with the exception of maybe a few small uh, percentage, um, that we practice empathy automatically, that we're born to do it. Um, and, and I think most people see empathy as this, just this feeling that you have, that 
And so they say, of course, I already know how to do empathy and I do it with my kids all the time or I do it with myself or my whatever. Um, but, uh, or, or and at the same time, I don't think that they are necessarily realizing there's a way you can do empathy, that you can show it and that you can practice it in a very action-oriented sense, well, word with your words, um, so that not only does the person receiving the empathy feel it, um, realize it, uh, and enjoy it, um, but also you're spreading the you're spreading how to do it. Um, mm. So here, um, I'm. I want to be sure I'm not being too wordy. <laughs> um, not really sure how much time we have here, and because I could go on forever and ever, um, and and I'm happy for you to go ahead and guide me as to getting back to the point of answering your question. Okay, so I'm really appreciate that you just shared. You're not sure how much time we have because. Uh, that helped me realize that I didn't even talk about time before we went live with the interview. So typically, I, um, these, these interviews tend to last around 30 minutes. Sometimes they're a bit under, sometimes they're a bit over, but I tend to go with a 30-minute guideline. So if you're happy to be in the interview for up to 30 minutes, then I guess we have another, you know, we have another 25 minutes or so. And, um, you know, I would... You know, I would really love for you to tell us a little bit more about the, about the concrete nature of MVC that you love so much. I mean, I think I know what you're going to say, because I think it's possibly one of the things that I adore about it. But I'd love to hear more from you about that concrete nature of MVC. Sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, what I enjoy about MVC uh, in terms of being a what seems what I would call a, a concrete tool is that it's very easy for beginners to pick up on and and use uh, it has a, a formula that we can use in the very beginning to uh, integrate NVC into our uh, way of being and once it's integrated then it becomes a lot more natural and uh, e you know, easy to use um, and, and before that, it can have some, some um, challenges because it may not, you know, because people are going to say, what is this way that you're speaking to me? People don't usually ask me uh, what's going on underneath my feelings. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's in NVC, there's a, a jargon term, a term that NVC uses called needs. Um, that's needs. And um, uh, I have... In my oh, 10 plus years of practicing NVC, I've decided that values um, usually maps just as well. So that sometimes we can use the word values instead of needs. Mm. Um, but uh, that's something we can talk about later. Mm. Uh, so back to the concrete, the, 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 the formula that you, that, is, that you can use in the beginning to learn, it's called OFNR. And the O stands for observation. The F for feeling, the N for needs, and the uh, the R for positive doable request. So uh, the way that might work uh, is, you know, observation being, hey, I uh, noticed that there the front door was open when I came in, and 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 um, my my feeling about that is is worry or or some anxiety, some I was. You know, wondering why is the front door open? That's kind of scary to me. Um, and then my need there would be security or safety. Mm. And my positive doable request would be, hey, can you tell me why the, the door was open? Or hey, would you be willing to be more careful in the future and uh, close the door when you come in? Um, now, that there, there, there are some distinct different ways to use MVC. I'm going to give you, uh, or, or that, that formula, okay, the, the empathy, the NVC type of empathy that we just used. Um, now, in the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, um, pretty much the first half of the book, you are using that kind of empathy where you're expressing your own observation and feeling and need and, and request in relation to, you know, to you. The request part is always in relation to you. It's mm. how can 
and or us how can we make life more wonderful for both of us mm. but the uh and the observation is too because you can only well okay so beginner nbc or the what you learn at first or what is is to look inside yourself and to express it in that way i see this i'm feeling this i'm needing this uh, and i i really believe it's it's quite necessary to get it from that direction first to understand yourself and your feelings mm -hmm. and needs before becoming you know before getting good at um, being able to guess at what other people's feelings and needs are so right. if, so if we were to use that formula in the, the secondary method it would be um hey i you know i saw the doors open uh, i'm wondering what you are feeling so you, you and you would guess so Hey, were you in a were you um, in a big rush? Uh, were you? And I'm trying to think of now a feeling that would go with feeling rushed. Were you kind of excited? Distracted. distracted. Okay, so maybe you were feeling distracted and excited and and whatever, and you had a need for efficiency because you're so you're moving fast and you had a lot of things going on. So you left that door open. Is is that what happened? And is that what happened right there and as well as the whole tone of question mm -hmm. rather than i know what happened you were doing this so i think it's very important here to point out that the mvc type of empathy we always want and i'm i'm being careful when i say always but i'm pretty sure <laughs> we always want to make sure we're expressing it as a question because we don't want to mm -hmm. tell people how to feel or assume we know for sure how they feel or what's going on underneath those feelings yeah, absolutely. I think when I first learned NVC, a lot living alongside you, when we stayed with you, it um, was so freeing for me, this kind of, this framework around it being about my observation, my feeling, my need, my positive doable request, because I had fallen into the bad habits of you know, well, you did this, you did that, you made me feel. And I hadn't been aware of those kinds of um, communication issues or, or habits really until I had this beautiful simplicity of bringing it back to, well, what did I observe? What do I feel? What do I need? And what's the request that I'd like to make? And I, I think that that's so valuable well, for all of us as individuals, but from a parenting perspective, when in, in parenting, it's so easy to have power over your child because, you know, you're the grown up, you have the money, you have the, the knowledge and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very easy to have power over a child. So in order to stay in a place of power with your child, remaining in that place of I is just, is brilliant. So for me, that is one of the the best parts of NVC, I think, in terms of how I share it from a yes parenting perspective, because parents are so quick to isolate an unwanted behavior in their child and everything be focused on the child does this, the child this, the child that. And, and I love that NVC brings it back to me taking responsibility for what goes on inside of me. Oh, does yeah. That, does that, yeah. yeah. It's um, what you're saying right there is what I see is such an embrace of this idea that, um, you know, power and responsibility are, are linked and, and power with is what we want with our children mm -hmm. versus power over. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I felt like you described that brilliantly um, as, as far as you have the money, you have this, the size, you, have, you know, all, all this power to decide what happens um, to your children and you chose you chose a paradigm shift of um, working with your children mm -hmm. and that 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 I that's uh, I think one of the most powerful things of NBC um, that that method of you know hey I feel this and here are what my needs are there's there's a responsibility that you're you're putting into words and I think with repetition you're, you're, you're taking, the, you know, those words being, I'm responsible for how I am. I'm not going to blame or just, or I'm not going to put anybody else in charge of my feelings. Mm. And, and to me, that, that gives you a lot of power and it's the power with kind of power mm. that you need to be a good parent. Absolutely. So I have, um, 
I have a question for you, um, which I think is an area of NVC where I continue to kind of experience some tension or like, I feel like I'm still trying to work it out. And I recognize that it's, it is about me. It's probably about an unmet need in me, but, um, which is when I am practicing NVC with someone else and what they're throwing back at me is blame because that, you know, whatever is going on is, it is causing this stuff to come out of them. I find it so hard to stay in that place of empathy when, you know, I am being responsible for my own feelings, my own needs. I'm making a positive, durable request. And then they're throwing, yeah, but you, and you know, you have all these years of experience and I'm guessing you have also come up against that. So I would love to hear from you about how, how can we, when we're faced in that situation with someone who's not using NBC, how, how can we kind of navigate those waters where it's a, there's, a, there's a different form of communication coming back at us and we're trying so hard to stay in this place of empathy? Oh yeah, that can be so hard when you are practicing, you know, you've gone through the effort um, to, and, and it becomes effortless to, to mm. greater degrees as you move on, but you're, 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 you're genuinely wanting a sweet connection with them. You're genuinely wanting to empathize with them. So you're like, and, you, and you're curious, you know, that's part of it. It's like, hey, are you, you know, really upset because that thing happened and you really wanted more blah, blah, blah. And then that person doesn't react the way you want um, because partially, maybe, maybe because they don't want to take responsibility because it's, it's scary for them. And, and just because of what they're used to, you know, what the, the author of the book, Marshall Rosenberg calls it domination culture that we're raised in. And if that person has spent 30 years of their life in that domination culture, and for the first time ever, they're hearing this kind of empathy that, that they're likely to either not trust it, um, whether that's on a conscious or subconscious level, um, or not even trust themselves and how to deal yeah. with it. And um, so if you're asking me for a couple little tidbits as to how to deal with that, yes, I see you nodding. Okay. Um, so one of the things about MVC is we, we try to... Uh, you know, ask for permission before giving advice. We want to make sure we're, we're addressing, so, you know, we're not wasting a person's time or giving them advice they don't want or need. Mm -hmm. um, so here, number one, I mean, it's just experience. Number one, it's like practice, 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 you know, giving empathy even to their objection or whatever it is. If they're not quite getting it, they still want to blame somebody else for their problem. And it's like, oh, wow, yeah, I see how you, you look at that other person and the thing that happened between you and that other person and it's really disappointing. You wish they had done different things, don't you? You know, because you really wanted more blah, blah, blah. You wanted more truth or you wanted more um, consideration or respect or whatever the, the need is. Um, that's when I say you wanted more, I'm putting the need after that or the mm -hmm. value. Um, so that's, that's the, the answer. That's the easy answer um, as far as like, of course, practice more, get better. But um, I, I like to, you know, and that is somewhat concrete, of course, but um, there are, um, there, one, one thing is, okay, an epiphany that I had, here's an example, um, and this is the result of practicing, and or maybe you could meditate on something like this, and it's, um, there's a guy that practices in VC that's been doing it as long as I have, and um, his name is Daryl Becker. In, um, I highly recommend looking him up on Facebook and just following him. He's brilliant. Um, so I, I was listening to him in a podcast once talk about how he was giving NBC to somebody and they were just shutting him down, um, even, you know, attacking him, you know, verbally mm -hmm. calling him names and stuff. And um, I, the, the, the issue was that he was, they, okay. I, he gave, he, the idea, the, the image he gave me was sometimes NVC can feel like to another person can feel like you're just ripping their clothes off without their permission. <laughs> you're walking up to them and you're exposing them. Okay. And they, you know, and even though you're, you know, from an NVC perspective, it's like, no, we're giving them a choice, but it's actually more important in this context to 
let go of our perspective. And to me, that's what MVC is all about when you do that second form of empathy that I mentioned earlier is you're practicing letting go of your own perspective for how, you know, and you, it doesn't mean agreement. And this is very important. Mm. You're letting go of your, your assessment of what they said. So, so there is no disagree or agree because you don't, you're not assessing. You're purely in their shoes. And you're like, what is it like for this person to have this opinion about this thing? Wow. And, and I'll tell you, this is super useful if you're debating with somebody about anything, even political debate. It's, it's, I have a lot of practice with that. And it just works so great because you let go of your own thing long enough to really get them. Mm -hmm. But I sidetracked here, okay? So what I realized after hearing Daryl use such um, vivid imagery, um, I, you know, like it's like you're ripping somebody's clothes off and violating their privacy. That helped me because up until that point, and it was maybe, you know, six or seven years in, you know, maybe three years ago or so that I had this epiphany. I realized when I would use NBC, um, and it was use NVC. It wasn't such as integrated as it is now. Um, but I was intentionally using it with somebody like I was curious, da, 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 and, and maybe subconsciously. Okay. That part doesn't matter. And their reaction, if, it, and it, this didn't happen often, but when it did, it was very obvious. It was a very negative reaction. They either lied to me, um, about if I asked about a need or something deeper, you know, they either lied or they refused to answer, or they dodged the question, mm -hmm. or they told me, hey, that's none of your business, or something like that. And you now here's the key. My reaction to that internally was that I would judge them. And my judgment was pretty harsh. My judgment was something along the lines of either, this person is so damaged that they can't look inside themselves. This person is so afraid to, you know, distrusting of me to reveal this thing I'm asking of them about themselves mm. um, or they're a hater or something. I, I had these judgments. And um, then after hearing Daryl talk about that, I realized, oh my God, I'm not being compassionate. I'm not being, you know, so, so from then on, when I would encounter that, I would remember and I would just continue with the empathy. So I'd be like, okay, this person is just like me. They, you know, and, and maybe, and what is their need here? Maybe it's privacy and that's okay. Mm. And, they, you know, and they don't owe me anything. You know, it's, I mean, mm. something that I, I read into NBC is mm. that we don't owe anybody empathy. Um, it would be so wonderful if we would give it, but give doesn't mean obligation. Right. Um, yeah. Which so, is why it's a, a positive doable request, not making a demand. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's, yeah, and if I can, for a moment, um, yeah, positive doable request. So we had uh, that formula again, O F N R, and you know it's observation, feeling, need, request, and the the request part, like you just said, I think that's so important. It's it's um it's an underlying principle of NVC. We don't want people to do anything except for out of the own their own desire to do it. Um, so. We always request, we, we never demand. And, and we wanna be real careful about the energy, you know, the, the, the mood, the way we are feeling about asking somebody to do something and ask ourselves, what if they say no? Um, and, then, and if we are upset by them saying no, that means we weren't really requesting, we were probably demanding. Mm. One of the areas that um, comes up with my clients um, in terms of parenting, is that there are there are there are things that they can request of their kids and, and you know they're okay with their kids saying no but they said to me but what about the things that the children have to do for example you know i have to get my child to school on time otherwise uh you know they will have an unauthorized absence against them and then when there's i don't know my kids don't go to school so i don't really know the details but for example like when they have four unauthorized absences then uh, you know, there might be some kind of um, fine that I have to pay some kind of like, I don't know, like, like a court, like, you know, I mean, parents get taken to court because their kids are not in school on time and regularly enough. So a parent might say to me, but, you know, I've been, I, I've been trying the NBC thing, 
I mean, trying to stay in this place of acceptance and compassion and offering empathy, but actually we need to get out the door and I need my child to get to school. And within the, within the context of the work that I do, which is, you know, MVC is just part of, you know, the bigger picture of yes parenting. You know, I help the parent work through that in a variety of ways. But um, I'm interested from, a, from an, an MVC perspective, and I know that you make these lovely little animations about different things like this. In that situation, how, could, how would MVC respond to that? Yeah, that's a, that's a hard one. And especially, I mean, that specific situation is a very hard one because, um, you know, I, we could look at it from quite a few levels, from a philosophical level all, all the way up to a practical level. And starting from the more philosophical, we might, uh, we, this to me is a signal. If, it, if it's a thing that is, is like, for example, um, hey, I'm going to get some kind of punishment from the state if I don't force you, the child, to do this thing, you know, go to school. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's a signal that there's something wrong in that system. Um, mm -hmm. but that's not here. I understand that's not what we're here to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so stepping up to the more practical level of, you know, well, this system, I mean, there's no getting around it, let's say. Let's say it is, you know, you're living somewhere where it's impossible to take your kids out of school or you don't have the time or, you know, the resources to homeschool or unschool your child because um, you haven't, yeah. Um, then for me, there's, this is where we, we're sort of being forced, maybe. I mean, I'm hoping to hear from you some ideas, but um, in that exact situation, it's like we're sort of, being forced uh, by the state to get that kid to school. So negotiation with the child over this um, becomes a little more constrained than it might be over other things. And so it's where we, um, it's, I'm feeling a discomfort right now because this is something I, you know, it's like we have to, and I don't even like using the word have to, but in that situation, what I would see happening is at the very least, instead of saying to the kid, hey, we have to do this now, get your stuff together, or we've got to get, to get you to school on time, and you know, I'm going to use force if necessary. Well, I, I think there's some stuff that, that can come before that, which is empathy. So, um, and really, this part can be applied to any situation. I think when you know, we're encountered with a situation where we have, have to, you know, there's no other option except to say no to a child or to say, look, I need to get you in this car so we can go. It is very important. Then right there, before that happens, that we acknowledge what's going on for them. And it can be like, wow, I imagine from your perspective, you don't want to go to school. You would rather just stay home and play all day or do the kind of learning that you can do here. Um, with me or by yourself, with your books, with your friends, um, whatever things you would do that are self-directed uh, learning. Um, and I, I understand how you feel about that. And gosh, I wish there was some way around that. So that's the path that I would take is to, and, and you know, and quite often, depending on your connection with the child and how, how, how many times in the past this has happened and whatever, um, depending on all of that, then that might be enough and the kid might be like, you know what, um, let's go ahead and get in the car and do this. Um, and then what I skipped right there, it, and it may or may not be necessary, is to mention what your needs are. Um, mm -hmm. So that might be the next level if you have, um, you feel like you've, you've given the child as much empathy and understanding for how they feel about going to school today, um, and as much as you can give and they're still adamant about staying on that video game or whatever, um, then, then that's where, yeah, it's like, hey, you have needs too. And you, know, you, you need to express what those are to the child. And, mm. and, and then, then, I don't know. I, so now I'm really actually willing, wondering, because I think you have more experience. While I have a daughter, you have two kids and you've been doing this with your kids more than I've done with mine, because my daughter's already out of the house. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, the only children I have used NBC with, besides random friends' kids at random times, is working at a daycare for a while. Um, that was just six months just to practice NBC. But but I I, I really I have a, I know that you have way more experience, and I'm I'm super curious to hear how you would handle or have handled 
a situation like that? Yeah. Um, well, thank you for opening it back up to me. I, I mean, I really appreciated hearing uh, your take on it, not least because it actually affirmed me that I have been applying NVC in, in a kind of a, a helpful way within the realms of my work. Um, I mean, my boys did go for, to school for, um, well, Joss went to school for 15 months and Pete for 18 months when after we came back from America and my marriage broke down and my kids went to school then and, you know, that was really hard. But I chose, A, I chose to just stay with empathy until my child was ready to go in and if that meant I ended up getting telling a telling off or a fine or whatever, I was like, well, my relationship with my child is more important than this system. And I was aware that, well, I was aware that it, I was choosing to put my kids in school. I, I felt very conflicted because um, it, it was kind of caught up in the, you know, the marriage breakup. But anyway, and then I, you know, I made the decision that actually I was going to honour Joss's wishes and bring him out of school. And then a few months later, Peep, who wanted to be in school, then decided he wanted to be home ed. So he came out too. Within the realms of the work that I do with parents, I guess I'm bringing in other aspects and NBC is part of that. So I talk a lot about like what it, the first yes in yes parenting is always a yes to yourself. Like, am I meeting my own needs? Am I saying yes to my own interests and preferences? Am I saying yes to my desires where possible? Am I being clear at establishing my boundaries to protect my you know, my space, whether that's emotional, mental space or physical space. So I, I'm always bringing the mums that I work with back to, back to themselves. Um, so I would start looking at practical things like, well, how long are you spending in this tussle with your child every morning? And let's say it's 30 minutes. I would be like, well, what would happen if you got up 30 minutes earlier? So you knew that that 30 minute window was there and then you could still come from a place of empathy. You could still come from a place of right now, this is the choice I'm making that my child has to be in school for whatever reason, but I'm also making a choice to have a longer period of time so that my child and I can stay connected and still get to the school gates on time. So that I would be exploring what other options do we have available? And then also at the other end of school, how are we, um, you know, how are we making, how are we creating opportunities for our children to have a full emotional expression about their dissatisfaction with school? So, you know, going to the playground and being able to physically, physically work it out or knowing that, you know, knowing that our child might have a meltdown and rage every afternoon and that we respond to that with, you know, understanding and acceptance and compassion because you know that's that's part of them expressing what's going on at school for them so i kind of i'm always working to bring in these other elements to kind of you know create a, a range of a range of resources for the parents that i work with um but i'm so grateful to have nvc as part of it i mean because N nvc is one of the foundational pillars of yes parenting you know it, it was coming back from my time in America, having stayed with you, it was a piece of the puzzle that I hadn't consciously be. I know you said that it surprised you how quickly I picked it up. So subconsciously I was already working with some of the concepts or the underlying things of NVC, but on a conscious level, I, it wasn't anything I'd ever come across. And as I consciously began to engage with it, um, then when Yes Parenting emerged at the beginning of 2014, you know, the whole NVC thing, it was like there. And it was as significant as my understanding around behavior through neuro-linguistic programming and other things. So it's, it's been pivotal. You're coming into my membership group as a guest expert um, in a couple of weeks to, um, to talk through with the members each day for five days about developing this MVC practice. But you've also set up very successfully in Austin, and now you're doing it again in Acapulco, these emotional intelligence play meetups. 
and man I wish there was one in Sheffield can you tell me a little bit about them because I would love to learn more about about what what happens at those meetups and how is that supporting people in their practice of NBC yeah uh, the meetups were born of um, so I would have these free NVC classes, uh, maybe two or three times a year that would be like a 13 week class or a six week class. And from time to time, I would run into people who had been in my classes and they'd say, hey, when are you having another class or when are you having something where we can get together and practice our, what we've learned because I don't really get an opportunity or da da da. So I thought, you know what, how about a weekly meetup? And started doing that and it really took off and we would it would be pretty informal we usually in in the beginning um for most of it we would meet up at a restaurant that i would choose and you know we would sit and eat and drink and talk and but i would um impose <laughs> or request <laughs> a certain amount of structures and um my you know i would guide the meetings to uh where we would do certain kinds of empathy exercises and after about a year of that, I realized that, um, you know, I like playing games and I think a lot of people like playing games. And I thought, here's a great way to, you know, for us to have um, a, uh, a way to practice NVC that's fun and that people can take with them. So I invented a card game called Play to Evolve. And, um, so we would sort of uh, test play it as I was developing the game until I finally got it to the point where I can get it printed professionally. And we would test it at these meetups, these weekly meetups, which I ended up, um, actually I started then doing the meetups twice a week um, after a while because I was just so into it and people were showing up. Um, but here's what the, the game, I mean, it's, you can't really see much except the, you know, it says there, play yeah. to evolve. Um, so again, I called it play to evolve and you can go to play to evolve.com and, um, order decks to this game. And, um, basically it, uh, stimulates deeper conversation. If you were to play it without the rules, even you could just pick up a card and read it. And, um, the card might, uh, say something like share about a way you've affected another person. And so it, it prompts you to share about something about yourself or your experience that um, could stimulate great conversation. And, and then it has various rules, ways to play it, where then what the other players must do is empathize with you using the NVC formula. So it's a great way to practice. Mm. I, would, I would show up at my groups near, near like the, maybe into the, into the second year of doing my groups. And when we were play testing this game, I'd show up and we would be doing introductions and just some little bit of chit chat to warm up to each other and then this and that. And we would start talking about NBC or somebody's experience. And inevitably, somebody would be like, hey, Scott, let's play the game. Come on, when are we going to play the game? You know, so, so I feel like it's, it's somewhat of a success. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow, it sounds brilliant. It sounds like um, the perfect deck of cards to take on a road trip. Yeah, yeah. And it's playable with um, one person or many. Yeah. Uh, it gets bogged down a little bit when you get about 12, 15 people in there and just because... Yeah, it just gets bogged down. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, yeah, and it, I designed it for uh, a wide range of ages. I'd say, uh, you know, I'm starting to think as I play it more in the beginning, I thought, oh yeah, six-year-olds can play this because I encountered a six-year-old that could play it. But um, I'm thinking it's more geared toward like 10 years old and older, nine or 10. Um, so I'm working now on a, a set that's made just for kids. Brilliant. Okay, so it's playtoevolve.com. Yeah, yeah, thanks for, yeah. Okay, and, and your website is clearsay.net, yes? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Clearsay.net, okay, great. I'm going to, um, uh, when people get to the end of this video, there is a, um, a, a frame that has clearsay.net on it, and I will make sure that there is also playtoevolve.com on it, so people can easily go and find those things. So. I, I am so excited about welcoming you into my subscription group. And, um, but for people who are not members yet of my subscription group or, um, and haven't worked with you before, I, I really hope that people have kind of, will walk away from watching this interview um, with, with a greater sense of how they can 
kind of communicate with empathy, offer empathy and, you know, begin to receive empathy. So thank you for sharing your time and your, your knowledge and your expertise with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I feel honored. Thanks for, I mean, to me, a very important thing, if not the most important thing is for me is to spread NVC or at least the idea that, hey, empathy can really help in so many situations, whether it's with your children, your mate, friends, roommates, boss, uh, uh, contractors, clients. Uh, I've used it in all these situations and, and it has been so helpful and, and it's really helped me rewire my brain mm. to, to be more curious about people, to be more compassionate, more patient. Um, mm. it's, great, it's a great exercise that's easy to do that uh, and also it has increased my courage to go a little bit deeper with people to um, be more likely to ask questions that I know might elicit some kind of response I don't like mm. um, interesting so just just on that your passion being to spread NVC and support people in it do you um, do you offer like one-to-one -one NVC coaching or instruction or anything as, as, a, as a paid service? I mean, can people connect with you and kind of receive that support from you? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, okay. I, love, I love doing that. Okay, great. And is information about that at clearsay.net? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's yours. Brilliant. That's good. Okay, I just want to make sure that people can get in touch with you and access that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll speak to you soon.